Hello everyone and welcome back guys to round 5 of season 5 of our F1 2020 My Team Karima where today we're here back ready for the Dutch Grand Prix. Yes, we're back once more uh, with more races from this series. Now heading back to Europe, so far the opening rounds of this championship have been a little bit interesting. But yeah, heading back, we're, we're feeling confident at the moment. If you missed out on the last video, episode 100 of this series from the Chinese Grand Prix, I would definitely, definitely recommend going back and checking it out as well. You know, again, as always, a massive thank you uh, for the continued, continued support on the channel. If you're new around here, leave a like, get yourself subscribed. We're trying to hit 15,000 subs at the moment. So if you're going to help us get one step closer to that, it would be greatly, greatly appreciated as well. And yeah, spoilers then are going to be in 3, 2, 1 now. So last time out then, we were able to take our second race victory in a row early on this World Championship. Two thirds and two first places as we head back to Europe there. It certainly has been an interesting start to the season there. 15 points clear of our teammate Max Verstappen, who had a very disappointing day out in Shanghai with his worst results so far of the World Championship. Gasly comfortably P3 ahead of Albon, Norris and George Russell there, despite having two DNFs, is still way ahead of his teammate Valtteri Bottas, who scored points on just one occasion uh, with three outside the top 10 finishes in what is still theoretically, I think, the second best car in Formula 1 at the moment. If we have a look, yeah, there you go. You can see, yeah, us and Mercedes clear cut above the rest at the moment there. Racing point third ahead of Alfa Tauri, Ferrari, Red Bull, Renault, McLaren. You can see a long drop off back to Alfa Romeo and Williams and then an even further drop off to Haas as well. But yeah, let's dive in. Ready for round five of the season. We're back at the iconic Zandvoort circuit. Let's do this thing. So here we are then, back at the roller coaster that is the Zandvoort circuit, and it's looking like mixed conditions ready for this qualifying session, so we're taking a big, big gamble by heading out there on a set of mediums for our first lap. If the track gets wet enough as soon as we finish the lap, then hopefully that should get us through into Q3 on the slightly harder compounded tyres here, but if it starts to rain more and more, we can't find the time. We could find ourselves going out in Q2 for the third time in a row this season. I mean, we've we've won both the races we've got out in Q2, but still, yeah, not not really an ideal track record that we want to be trying to maintain coming down through in towards the final sector of the lap. We're about seven tenths behind George Russell, but we've always been quick through the final sector of this circuit. Can we just keep it nice and tiny? Get the lap in and at least get ourselves inside the top ten as we head down in towards the final turn there, the oval star corner to finish off this lap. Shortest run to the line. Let's just see, what is the time going to be? It's going to be a 1.094. So a couple of tenths off Lando Norris. But sixth place at the moment is going to really not probably be ideal. Heading back out onto the circuit though with about three minutes to go. There is still a little bit of drizzle. But it just doesn't seem like the track is getting wet enough for some intermediate tyres to be required. The team still reckon these softs are going to be quicker than the mediums we've already been out on. And we do need to try and find a few tenths if we want to get ourselves through into Q3 here at the final corner we go. Give ourselves the longest run to the finish line to maintain as much momentum as we can here. But what are we going to be able to do as we head back down in towards the first corner? We should get a rough idea about what the grip levels are like. Not a particularly good run through the first turn. Nice and tidy. Come on, keep it clean. Uh, yeah, oh, it's going to be close. We need to find a few tents, so we're going to have to be brave. Through the twisty bits here. We have been a little bit cautious in the first sector of the lap down the hill. Or oh, back in just felt that trying to ground out ever so slightly. But we do get away with it. So we just try and keep it nice and tidy. There we go. That's a bit of time. Ooh, a bit of a lock up. Almost running wide into the grass through the very next corner. As we try to put the power down. We are up on our previous lap. We're going to have to go for two runs here. If we can improve on this lap. Lap but the grip, yeah, really just starting to fall away as we head down in towards the final sector of the lap. There's definitely not quite as much grip as there once was, and yeah, we're only going to be fractionally up as we head out of the final corner. We have just about got enough fuel, uh, ERS even, I should say, to go for another lap. So we're going to have to really now try and just stick it all on the line in this final run. Still down in P15 as we head through the first couple of corners there. But now, let's just see 
Not often do I have to do double runs on F1 2020, but that's just the desperate situation we're in. We cannot afford to go out of three Q2s in a row here in this season. As can we be a little bit braver? There we go. Use the curbing nicely. Leave it in sixth gear through there. Scrub off as little speed as possible. And we are finding a little bit of time at the moment. This is obviously where we lost a bit last time round. Again, we're about a tenth up at the moment, but it's not looking good enough. As we head down in towards Sector 3, we need to be brave. Really just trying to throw the car across the kerbs as much as we dare. There we go. How have we not found more time there? I swear the last time around we had a horrible run through there, but in towards the final corner, we are about two tenths up now on our previous lap. Hopefully we're going to find our way up the order a bit, but is it going to get us inside the top ten? Tenth on the grid, come on! Surely that's got to be good enough to get us through there. Like I said, I never have to do double runs on F1 2020, but I pray, I pray that's good enough for Q3. Only just sneaking through into Q3 there, as actually Verstappen managed to do that lap on the medium compounded tyres, so our teammate, obviously home Grand Prix for him, I'm sure he absolutely wants to just slap this one. So yeah, Max Verstappen though looking incredibly quick there, Guan Yu Zhou P3 in his very first outing here at Zandvoort in a Formula 1 car as well there, but both Red Bulls make it through as well there, Charles Leclerc, Bottas as well, not getting through into Q3 at the end of the session there, but we just snuck in right at the very end. That is exactly what we need. Let's dive into Q3 here from Zandvoort. Heading out into Q3 then, we want to try and be one of the first people on a run. As you can see, it is still raining, but it is still better to be on the dries than the wet compounded tyres as we head out of the final corner. Again, don't want to take too many big risks, but this might be our one chance to really get it right up the order for the start of the Dutch Grand Prix. Overtaking isn't exactly easy around this circuit. Yeah, there's definitely less and less grip with every session that passes by at the moment. With every session and every second, it feels like at the moment, as we try to get the nose... Come on! Nice and tidy there, trying to avoid the wheel spin as best as possible. Gasly goes quickest on 11.3. At the end of his first run as we head down the hill. Oh, a bit of a wobble. But we do hold on to the back end. Could this finally be Alpha Tower's moment in the sun in this My Team Caribbean? There, George Russell, there's a 10 8. So I can't work out just how much slower it feels than the last session. Obviously, DRS is still enabled, so it is definitely still dry weather tyres for the way to go at the moment. And we did go purple. Through the middle sector. They're a bit of a lockup as we head down in towards the final couple of turns of the lap. Can we just keep it nice and tidy through the final couple of corners we go? Try to avoid the wheel spin. Max Verstappen goes even quicker on a 10-7 as we head out of the final turn. What are we going to be able to do? A 10-7 is the time to beat. A 10-4. Now we're finally starting to bring it to our teammate right in the dying stages of this Zanvoort qualifying session. We're finally getting somewhere. Fantastic. You've got pole. There we go. That's what I love to hear on the radio from Jeff. Pole position. Ready for the Dutch Grand Prix. With qualifying complete, let's review our top three today. Mr. Monaco, Verstappen and George Russell. With qualifying wrapped up, we now have our grid line up for the big race tomorrow. Be sure to join us then for what will no doubt be a fantastic race. So there we go. From being knocked out twice in Q2... In the last two Grand Prix, there we have come back at the Dutch Grand Prix and stole it away from our teammate at the end of Q3. There, yeah, three tenths the gap at the end of qualifying. There, with George Russell P3 ahead of Gasly, both Red Bulls actually on the third row, finally looking to have a bit more confidence in those slippery conditions that session there. But that's exactly what we need. Let's see if we can hold on to it during the Grand Prix. I don't know if we've ever actually won the Dutch Grand Prix on F1 2020. I think we might have done last season, but anyway, let's try and win it once again here today. Welcome along then to the North Sea coast and Zandvoort, 25 miles away from Amsterdam and the host for today's Dutch Grand Prix. It's a race the great Jim Clark won on four occasions, leading for an astonishing total of 370 laps. A lap of this short 2.6 mile Zandvoort circuit features 14 corners, 10 to the right and four to the left. The main straight is 678 meters long and heads into turn one, the Tarzan corner. With DRS down the main straight into the braking zone, that could be the best overtaking opportunity on the track.
It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. Mr. Monaco lines up on pole position and Max Verstappen lines up alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Russell, Gasly, Lewis Hamilton and Albon, Stroll, Sainz, Perez and Quan Yu Zhou, Ocon, Leclerc, Daniel Kvyat and Norris, Bottas, Latifi, Kimi Raikkonen and Nobuharu Matsushita, King, Magnussen, Giovinazzi and Nick de Vries. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. After the points finish last race, let's aim to keep the momentum going. So here we are then, ready on the grid for round five of the season from the Dutch Grand Prix. Then very, very much looking forward to this one. Our first pole position in the new season as well. They're our first pole position with Honda Power, so very, very happy with that. But yeah, obviously, homeboy Maxi alongside us. He'll be running the race of victory today as well. You know, his pace has been relentless in the early stages of this World Championship. I think he's either been the quickest qualifier... I think he was quickest qualifier in every race but Australia. And even there, he's starting a pole uh, due to George Russell having some grid penalties there. But yeah, he wants his first win since Melbourne as well. And I'm sure, yeah, he wants to take that here at his home circuit as well. But hopefully we can keep it ahead of him down in towards the first corner. Remember, he is starting on those medium compounder tyres as well. So hopefully we can get a slightly better start than our teammate. Five red lights. And it's lights out. And away we go. A lot of wheel spin. Even more wheel spin as we head down in towards the first corner. There is George Russell. I think tried to have a look around the outside of the pair of us. There are a lot of contact, actually, as Max tried to keep the nose up the inside there. We actually get a warning for a collision with our teammate there. But George Russell has been able to slot between the two 2 and 2 motorsport cars there off the start of this Dutch Grand Prix. So a brilliant little start for George Russell there. A bit of P2. Not quite what our teammate Max needs. Just look at that, Russell. Trying to look around the outside as we reach the top of the hill. Surely there's not going to be any room there. Him to try and go for anything. He's going to try and keep going with a wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact between myself and George Russell there, who's clearly feeling like a brave, brave man this weekend and, you know, wants to try and get his first win since the Bahrain Grand Prix. Look at that, George Russell. Incredibly feisty at the start of this Grand Prix there. But we have held on to the lead as we head down into our ward sector three here. Right, the curb's nice and tidy. Oh, a little bit deep on the way in and therefore... On the way out there is George Russell gets incredibly fished daily behind us. That's just going to give us a couple of extra tents that we need as we head out of the final corner there. But finishing lap one then, it's gone from George Russell trying to go side by side just about everywhere with us to a comfortable 1.1 second lead as we head back down in towards turn one. Now remember, these qualifying lap, uh, these tyres even I should say have to do two qualifying laps and in very, very tricky conditions. So I'm sure they've got a fair bit of wear through them as well. But let's just see if we can hold on nice and tightly. It's going to be very, very interesting to see if Max Verstappen can get around George Russell once again in this Grand Prix. We have definitely got the fastest car there as we almost dip back down into the 109s. They're already gone quicker than we were able to with our qualifying time. But yeah, Max though, I think he's certainly still the one to watch this race on the alternate strategy. Whether he'll be able to make it work though is a bit of a different question. On to lap 5, George Russell and Max Verstappen are still sticking pretty close to us. Just behind, George actually snagged the fastest lap a couple of laps ago, dipping down into the 109s. But yeah, we're just trying to keep it cool, calm and collected early on in this race. You know, tyre wear can get a bit difficult around the circuit if you're a bit too aggressive on those rears. And especially through corners like that, you do not want a loose rear end. As we found out, I think it was all the way back in Season 2 of this career mode where we faced our very first DNF of this series but yeah so far though so good the gap hovering yeah between about one and one and a half seconds just trying to keep George out of DRS range I think the question very quickly becomes in this Grand Prix not whether we can hold on to the race lead but when are we going to need to pit there is all George Russell just see that in the rearview mirror as he gets a little bit out of shape down in towards the hairpin there very very satisfying corner and when you get it hooked up nice always try and make an overtake work around there as well but yeah so far though not many places to overtake around this circuit. We're just doing everything we need. Having a look at the minimap as well. It very much seems like the top four of myself, Verstappen, Russell and Gasly have really romped away from Racing Point and Red Bull further back. Which is good to see as well. As we get towards court race distance though in this Grand Prix, I think our teammate Verstappen has just made a small error as we head out of the final corner there. I think George Russell 
is starting to get a little bit bored of looking at our rear end as well as we head back down in towards the first corner. I thought Gasly might actually there be trying to have a look at something on Max, but I think we've just about got enough top end speed still in the car. But yeah, obviously the team's still saying we've got to go on hards to the end. I'm wondering if we can just get these tyres sort of lap 13, lap 14, whether the mediums might be possible here. Let's look at the run. George Russell's got up the hill there. Bit like lap one, he's actually running to the side of me. And George Russell might be out of the Grand Prix there. I'm not too sure what's happened to the Mercedes. I felt a little bit of contact there. I think he actually crashed into the back of my front wheel. Certainly didn't feel like we'd done anything dangerous there or untoward, but George Russell is going to drop back down to P4 in this Grand Prix. I'm not sure if he's got any front wing damage from that as well, but certainly just felt like he was trying to go for a bit of a risky move at completely the wrong place. There we go, George Russell has come into the pit lane. Not too sure if he's changed his front wing. Or it was just a scheduled stop from the Mercedes boys. But intrigued to see where he's going to come back out in this Grand Prix. He's pretty much, yeah, going to be at the rear of the field. So if we do pit soon, we should still have a bit of clear air for a couple of laps behind the likes of the Williams, the Alphas and the Haas cars. But, yeah, I'm just wondering how much further I want to risk taking these tyres as we actually go green through Sector 1. They clearly haven't hit the cliff just yet. Oh, Gasly behind us has dived into the pit lane, so he might be able to get a bit of an undercut in this Grand Prix. We're going to try and just get these tyres a couple of laps longer. I'm going to say the end of lap 14, and we're going to try and gamble it. We're going to try and go on to a set of mediums to the end of this race. I mean, these tyres will have done about, what, 16, 17 laps, if you include sort of the out lap in qualifying as well there. But, yeah, so far they're hanging on in all right. We're definitely starting to notice a loss of grip as Russell... Actually goes fastest on a 1091. So we have got to be a bit careful of the guys behind still. Oh my god, Max Verstappen. Really trying to make something happen as we get ready to pit in at the end of this lap there. Our teammate trying to go for a send up the inside. Again, he's going to try it. Down in towards the final sector there. And these tyres have definitely hit the cliff now. As Max Verstappen, yeah, desperate to try and make a move work. Pierre Gasly only about 15, 16 seconds behind us as we head in towards the final corner. So it's going to be interesting to see whether that little bit of moment between myself and our teammate is really going to cost us the long run in this race. Into the pits nice and tidily we go, though. Where is Pierre Gasly? You can just see him heading down through the final couple of corners. Obviously, we will get a short run at the first turn. But is Gasly going to be able to make this undercut work? 2.2 seconds stop. It's going to be incredibly close between the powers as we head back out of the pit lane. Very, very careful not to damage the front wing. But we have just about stayed ahead of the Alpha Tauri in this Grand Prix. And now, hopefully, with some fresher, quicker rubber, we can try and romp away before the tyres start to hit the cliff towards the end. 19 laps on a set of mediums. Let's do this thing. Verstappen in just one lap later than ourselves. So I think he's going on to a set of hards as well to the end of the Grand Prix here. But have Gasly and I been able to get the undercut? on him as well. I think we should be ahead of our teammate. Will Gasly be able to do the same though? As we head back down in towards Turn 1. I say that. Max Verstappen's had a pretty decent in lap. And we only just get ahead of our teammate as we rejoin the circuit. And we know he was quick on a harder stage of tyres early on. Is he going to be able to maintain that same sort of pace on his hards? The end of the race. Consider lowering the fuel mix. That was a little bit scary. As we cross over the halfway stage in this Grand Prix, the back end, yeah, you, you don't want to clip that inside curb there, as we have been romping away from Max Verstappen. That's just going to let him get back within the DRS range. Nope, we got yellow flags out. Down in Sector 2. No idea who's having issues. So we'll have a look in just a moment. I think it's one of the Red Bulls. Not too sure if it's Albon or Hamilton in this Grand Prix. Drop into the wayside, but that is not what they need. It is Alex Albon. Who was out of the Dutch Grand Prix there, and somehow, despite being parked on pretty much well, just off the racing line, we're not going to get a safety car, which is good for me, but not so good for our teammate. Right, let's have a look then. Where is Albon's car? Yeah, that's that's definitely nowhere near any sort of possible issue in this Grand Prix, especially if I just get a little bit of wheel spin like we've just done there. That might allow Max Verstappen to get close to us. He's going to have a look down the inside in towards the final sector. We try and really cut him off on the apex, but he's going to be able to have a look back at the inside again as we head down in towards the final couple of corners of the lap. Luckily, we've got a bit of overtake and richer rev, so we'll try and get the power down as early as possible. Holy moly, getting fish daily at the final corner. But look at the run 
from our teammate Max Verstappen as we head back down in towards the first corner there. We don't have the confidence on the brakes to hold the nose up the inside. And Max Verstappen retakes the lead of... Well, I say retakes the lead, takes the lead of the Tron Prix for the first time today. I'm sure the fans will be loving that as we try to get the power up the hill on our teammate once again here. We're going to try and use all of our overtake as we head up in towards turn 5 and turn 6. Not quite able to find anything though. So Max Verstappen into the lead over this Dutch Grand Prix. We're just 16 and a half laps to go. I think we might be shaping ourselves up to look like a bit of a villain in this Grand Prix at the moment. We're not allowing Max Verstappen to get away in this race. You know, there is a World Championship to battle for over the course of this year, and we just how quick our new teammate is looking. We can need every single possible points we can get our hands on early on this World Championship. So yeah, despite it being his home Grand Prix, we are not going to try and make this any easier for him than we possibly have to as we try to get a good run up the hill once again. Matsu Shita just in front of the pair of us now, so Max Verstappen is going to be experiencing the same sort of dirty air as we have been. As all oh, Matsushita! What was that from the Alfa Romeo man? And how on earth have we been able to hold on to the back end in that situation? Two big chunks of steering taken to keep that thing pointing in a straight line there as Matsushita tries to show the nose through the next corner, so I think he's been swiftly removed off our Christmas car list. And as soon as I was talking about trying to close up the Max Verstappen, he gets about a second of just free time over us with 13 to go. I think that little moment, unfortunately, with Matsushita has really knocked us out of a rhythm on these mediums and put a bit through wear, put a bit more wear through them, sorry, even I should say, than I really wanted to as we close in towards the final third of this Grand Prix. The team are saying we could pit onto another set of softs. If we pull about another second on that stroll, we'll come back out in P3. Obviously, we should be able to take the fastest lap as well there. And then, I mean, 15 seconds in, what, 10 laps to Max Verstappen on a much quicker, fresher set of tyres? Is it worth the gamble? I think it's worth the gamble at this stage of the day. We might come in the end of the next one, bought on a new set, and really just try and absolutely fly towards the end of this race. Pit this lap, so yep. push now. Team is still saying pit this lap, so that's exactly what we're going to do then. A bit of a gamble in this Dutch Grand Prix, but like I said, unless we get something else that goes catastrophically wrong, at the very worst, we're going to finish P3 in this race, and hopefully we've still got some pace over Pierre Gasly. Yeah, we'll need about 1.6, 1.7 a lap, which it is quite a short lap, but obviously very much tyre orientated as well, so a man can dream. I think the fact we've lost about half a second in the middle sector there implies that we're definitely making the right decision towards the end of this Grand Prix here. We need to be nice and aggressive down in towards the pit lane, though. Make sure we stay ahead of Lance Stroll in this Grand Prix. Gaz is going to move back up into P2. Where he's already finished uh, that place twice so far this year. But can we get a nice tidy pit lane? It's not going to be brilliant. 2.4. It's not too bad, though. We can certainly work with that. So 10 laps to go from the Dutch Grand Prix. As we head back out of the pit lane. Ooh, we're going to be a little bit cheeky on the exit, but we do get away with it. The gap 16.7, 16.6 seconds. Let's see what we can do. Where on earth is Max Verstappen? Suddenly found a 1091. Now we've pit. That is so frustrating in this Grand Prix that it looks like Max Verstappen has just been sandbagging a little bit to give us a false hope in this Grand Prix. We set a 1089, which is still ferociously fast around this circuit, but just so annoying. The fact that seemingly P2 might be all we can get here. We've got to try and close up nine seconds to Pierre Gasly. And so far, that might be a pretty big enough race in itself. There we go, 8.5. We are getting a bit quicker lap after lap. But yeah, the gap is definitely going to be the question now, whether we can close Pierre Gasly down for P2. Well, I think Max Verstappen has done what he needs to. I think the unfortunate reality of it is that we might just have overused these tyres early on in this stint. Now back down into the 1090s as it seems like everyone else has found more and more pace towards the end of this Grand Prix. The gap to Gasly barely coming down. The gap to Max pretty much near now level as well in this Grand Prix. But we have taken the fast lap bonus point away so it looks like it's going to be a net two point loss to have we finished second here, but still absolutely heartbreaking. We took the gamble 
just as everyone else's tyres seem to start shaping up better again. And I think that pretty much sums up the second half of this Grand Prix for us. Don't lose the place to the racing point. No, luckily that's just a freeze. Getting back past us here, but a race that showed so much potential early on. And unfortunately, yeah, just one strategy gamble. The first one, I think it was looking quite good until Max Hachita decided to really screw us. And then I think, yeah, there's no beating around the bush today. Max Verstappen, he wanted it more simple as. As we head on to the final lap here from Zandvoort, yeah. Max home Grand Prix, it's the first chance he's really had in a car capable of winning this race for him. As well, after years of not quite top spec Red Bull and Ferrari machinery, he's coming to the top team in Formula 1. And he's very much delivering himself as a top driver as well as we head in through the final few corners here from Zandvoort. I'm sure the Dutch fans are going to love this. We did try and apply a lot of pressure to our teammate early on in this race and around the halfway stage, but yeah, he, he wanted it more today, and I don't think anyone could deny that. George Russell, though, I, I think he certainly wanted it as well, as we discovered, uh, trying to go around the outside through a very, very fast uh, right-hander there. Yeah, it was never quite going to work out for him, but it did make Max's life just a little bit easier as well. Through the final corners, though, Max Verstappen is going to win the Dutch Grand Prix with the fastest lap of 1083 at the end, so we're not even going to get the fastest lap bonus point. That's how much he wanted it this weekend. Pierre Gasly is going to come through for his third second place of the World Championship as well. Their fantastic form from the young Frenchman as well. But through the final corners we go, we are going to come through for P3, our third third place of the World Championship. I felt like we deserved more, but we gave it our best shot. Good job, you did really well. Super driving. doubted whether they could pull off the win here in Zandvoort, but they have done, and done it in spectacular style. Anthony Davidson, what helped them deliver this result, do you think? Well, I think it was clear what the main contributing factor out on the track was today, speed. I know it sounds like an obvious thing to say, Crofty, but fast cars win races, and we saw that today with our winner. The faces on our top three look so incredibly happy as they make their way up to the podium. A much-deserved victory and a brilliant performance from them all. Let's have a quick look at how the driver's standings have changed. Mr. Monaco takes over the lead of the driver's championship. Let's focus on the driver of the day. Anthony Davidson, who do you pick? Interesting choice today, I think. There's a few to pick from, but I think I have to give it to Danny Fiat. He put in a rock-solid performance today, one that he can be proud of. It's time to check out the constructors' standings. The current leaders continue to extend their lead at the top. Meanwhile, a strong weekend from Red Bull this time out, and they improve their position in the championship. It's been an absolutely wild weekend of Formula 1 action. I can't wait to see what's next. So there we are then, guys. The end of the Dutch Grand Prix. And it is Max Verstappen. Second place on the grid. Fastest lap race victory. Plain and simple, the fastest man at the end of the day there. Gasly, another brilliant job from fourth to second in the end. They're on a pretty conservative one-stop strategy as well. But did the job. Got the points on the board as well. And that's exactly what Alfa Tauri need. At the moment, we come through for P3, a strategy gamble that didn't pay off, but, you know, we'll be back next time ready to try and get on the top step of the podium once more. There's Stroll and Perez, fourth and fifth, and a brilliant day out for Racing Point as they manage to force their way up through the field there. And Hamilton, sixth place doesn't look great on paper, but with how many struggles he's had with that Red Bull, isn't too bad going as well. There. A third driver of the day, Danny Kvyat, seventh from 13th on the grid, really sliced his way through the field as well. There ahead of Sainz, Guan Yu Zhou, and Esteban Ocon rounding out your point scorers there. Mercedes, another race where they walk away with no points. Bottas down in 11th just didn't seem to have any pace all at weekend there, and obviously George Russell fighting towards the front, took a gamble, and again, it didn't quite pay off for our former teammate there. Lando in 14th ahead of Latifi, and you can see Magnussen, Raikkonen, Giovinazzi, Jordan King, and Nick DeFries, as well as Matsushita, all a lap down, but Albon, the only man 
not to make it to the checkered flag there. But that means championship-wise, the gap back down to four points at the top of the standings. There are Gasly, 30 points off the top as well. 28 clear of Albon, who is still somehow P4 at the moment there. Lando Norris in fifth ahead of Danny Kvyat, who, yeah, finally those good results are starting to show as well. There is he's only four points off being fourth place overall there, ahead of George Russell now. Ocon's still in eighth. Uh, Stroll and Perez leapfrog Valtteri Bottas up inside the top ten. There is Hamilton now one point behind his former teammate, just two ahead of Charles Leclerc as well. And no other movers constructors-wise. We're still clear out on top. 88 points clear of Alpha Tauri. A two-race margin already after just five races this season. Goes to show how quick and consistent we have been at the front of the field there. Red Bull still up into P3. 53 points ahead of Mercedes on 47. McLaren on 43. Racing point on 40. So a brilliant little battle going on there. With Renault on 21 and Ferrari still worst of the scores there. With seemingly Alfa Romeo losing their name in a Formula 1 as well there for whatever reason as well. But thank you all so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy, do make sure you leave a like. Get yourself subscribed as well. And yeah, we'll be back very, very soon for round 6 of the season where we head to Spain. You guys do not want to miss it. A big thank you to our channel members for making these videos possible. You can be featured in these end clips as well as granted access to some other exclusive perks for just £1 a month by clicking the join button below.